going on YouTube? It's your boy TBK. So as I've been doing YouTube over the past few years, I've realized that there are so many of you who live in places that don't have private teachers. There's so many of you who may be adult learners out there. And so I've also looked and juxtaposed uh, the resources that are available to you on YouTube as to how to play a string instrument. And there really, there are a few, but there aren't that many, especially coming from people who are Juilliard trained. So this will be the beginning of a series where I will just share with you every single thing that I know about how to play a stringed instrument. <laughs> so naturally, this is gonna be a video series with about four videos, so. Ah. What can I say? Anyway, welcome to TVK's classroom. And today we're gonna to be talking about rosin. Now rosin is one of the most important things that you have at your disposal as a string player for sound production. Yes, you need a good bow. Yes, you need a good instrument and good strings. But at the end of the day, you also need good rosin and you need to have good rosin habits. Here are five things that you need to know about how to use your rosin. Number one, don't touch your hair. When you are rosining your bow, when you're even handling your bow, never touch the hair because what you'll do is you're gonna put your oils that are from your hands, you're gonna put that into the hair and that is gonna prevent the rosin from binding to the hair. Now I've heard in the past that the hairs of horses have these tiny micro hooks that pull the metal of the string uh, to make it vibrate, but actually that's not the case. The real reason why rosin is important is because it creates the friction. It's not the hair. You can use human hair and put rosin on it and use it for your bow. Don't do it because that's weird and gross. But, <laughs> but that's beside the point. The rosin is the catalyst for pulling the hair of the bow. So if you touch the hair, you're going to be preventing rosin from doing its job. So don't do it. And before you apply your rosin, make sure that your bow hair is taut. Make sure you tighten the bow because you don't want to be scraping your rosin against the stick of wood because you're gonna get rosin on it and that's really, really tough to get off. Step two, now if you just bought a new cake of rosin or a little uh, slide of rosin, make sure that you take a coin and you scratch the surface of it so you make sure that it activates it. A lot of times uh, beginners, they get a new piece of rosin, they try to rosin their bow, but they get really frustrated because they don't know how to activate that rosin to get it going. And all it takes is just a coin scraping the surface of it and you're good to go. Number three, rosin each and every part of your bow. This is super essential because you don't want to have parts of your bow that don't have rosin uh, because when you're pulling full bows, you don't want the sound to come in and out. Like, let's say you pull the bow all the way to the tip and if there's no rosin at the tip, you're actually gonna cut out in sound and that's not what you want. So you wanna rosin every inch of your bow evenly. And number four, this is a little secret that helps me keep my rosin for longer. Most people don't realize this, but if you get circle cakes of rosin like this, a lot of people just uh, pull, the, pull the bow across the middle of it, creating a groove in the middle. But if you look at my rosin right here, it's very even. It's very easy, even. It doesn't have any grooves in it. And that's because I rotate the rosin as I'm applying it. That way you don't create these ridges and grooves in your rosin that make it more susceptible to breaking and cracking. It keeps it whole and even throughout. And you're also saving money because you won't have to buy new rosin as often. You're gonna get more bang for your buck because you're getting every inch of that surface area. And you know, it kind of looks cool when you pull out a really beautiful piece of rosin cake from your case. And a side note, the only chips and grooves that you see on my rosin, they're from when people borrowed it and nicked it with their frog. I'm so salty about that. So if you want to borrow my rosin, sorry, you can't because you're going to ruin it. <laughs> and if you've got a stick of rosin, you know, a rosin, piece of rosin that just goes from side to side, uh, make sure you just cover each side and don't create a big old valley in the middle just so you can get the most of that rosin cake as well. And at number five, the last tip that I want to give you is once you're done playing your instrument, make sure you wipe off the rosin from your bow stick. Make sure you wipe it off your strings because it'll 
first of all, make sure your strings can catch rosin a lot easier. It won't, it'll prevent rosin from caking on top of the strings and it'll also prevent the rosin from caking on the bow. And that's something I didn't know when I was younger, but it's something, it's a good habit to get into. Well, there you have it. Those are some quick tips and quick hacks on how you can use your rosin most effectively. I hope that was very helpful. And honestly, these are things that people aren't talking about very often because they're the basics, but I'm going back to basics just for you. If this video helped you, let me know by giving it a like because I want to make sure I'm giving you content that you want to see. And if you have a friend that's just starting out on a string instrument, share this video with them. I want to make sure everybody has the ability to get the knowledge they need to get going on a string instrument. And with that, I hope you have a great day and don't forget to play homie play. What's up guys, so if you're looking for rosin, really good high quality rosin, this isn't sponsored, but I recommend you go ahead and get Bernadelle rosin. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can go and get some. If you're looking for really high quality rosin and you just want rosin that's versatile, that works, that is consistent, get yourself some Gustav Bernadelle. That's the rosin I use, and I'm sure many of you were wondering that. So have a great day, thank you so much for watching.